What's going on, YouTube, and welcome to my Gotham Episode 3 review, The Balloon Man. In this episode, uh, we kind of um, veered a little bit away from a Batman feel. Yes, there are a lot of Batman less Batman like features in the show, obviously, because it's in Gotham. Um, but it felt much more like just like a regular cop show. Uh, this episode featured around a vigilante called the Balloon Man, and he had stolen weather balloons and tied corrupt individuals who he found corrupt to the weather balloons and sent them up to the sky, and they ended up plummeting down and ended up when they popped high from the sky. Um, he sent up a businessman, a cop, and a priest. Um, after the first murder of this, the politician, no one really cared. Not the politi like the businessman, no one really cared. When the cop was killed, that's when people started getting involved. And then with the priest, that was just messed up. Um, that was more addressed by Moroni, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, this really tested um, Gordon's limits, uh, because he felt like after one person was murdered this way, they should jump right on it. Um, but of course, the GCPD, except for him, is extremely corrupt and owned Val Falcone or Moroni. Um, we, we definitely saw Moroni getting more power and his prominence, um, and how prominent he's becoming in this universe. In this episode, um, we also saw the Penguin return to Gotham in this episode, which is really cool. He started working for an Italian restaurant owned by Maroni, which was really cool. Now, Penguin has worked for someone who worked for Falcone, or Falcone. I still call him Falcone, but the show calls him Falcone. So I'll try to call him Falcone from now on. But now he works for a uh, guy who works for Maroni. So now he's getting the other side. So he's just all over the place, which is really cool. Um... So that's kind of the um, what happened in the show. Now we're going to go into my top five moments, and there will be honorable mentions afterwards, because there's a lot of stuff in this episode that I like. Um, first off, I want to... Number five, sorry. Number five is... Um, going through my list here of stuff that I wrote down. Um... Okay, let's talk about, um, at the end of the episode, Gordon, um, is talking to Barbara, and he is talking about how vigilantes are going to be popping up, and he's not fond of that. Um, that's very apparent in a lot of Batman origin stories, where the cops are very much after Batman. Um, so that's really cool just to see how Gordon already is off the bat. No vigilantes, that's not how their system should work. But where in the Batman universe, well, wherever that is, but, like, further in the future, where we know Gotham, he accepts Batman, the community accepts Batman, and he ought to, um, often partners with Batman. Number four. Um, the Penguin. His, his development in this episode. Uh, he is back in town. He is now back in Gotham after, um, an episode being out of town. And I really like, uh, one of the first times he's back in the city, um, he murders this guy and then goes and buys a tuna sandwich. Um, so this just shows his craziness. He says, Gotham... Um, I am Gotham's future, and the guy says, well, Gotham's going to hell if you're his future, and he says, you're right, and he slits the guy's throat, he, like, stabs him to death, and then takes him to the corner, and he goes back to the tuna sandwich. But it's just kind of funny, because he's, um, in the Batman universe, we know him as a penguin, and, you know, penguins eat fish and tuna, stuff like that, and also, the first time he killed a man was when he got out of the river, and he slit the guy's throat and then took his sandwich, which was probably, a t which looks like a tuna sandwich. So it's just kind of cool, these kind of nods at him being the penguin. Another nod of him being the penguin is when he comes to Gordon's apartment at the very end of the episode. If you look at his feet, are kind of like sideways like this. Not like how normal people were. My feet are kind of like this. I don't know why. I guess it's from my dad, I think. Um, but his feet are kind of sideways like a penguin. How they kind of they kind of waddle. His feet were positioned like that. Um, I don't know if that's from his leg being broken or something. but um, Or if he's always walked that way. It's just kind of cool that um, these penguin-like features of him. Okay. Number three, um, Maroni. We are introduced to... Okay, first of all, let's just talk about Arkham in general. Um, number three is the Arkham references in this episode. Uh, we have Falcone and Maroni both talking about Arkham, and they have different opinions of Arkham. Um, Falcone comes to Fishmini's place and talks to Fish again, and he talks about Arkham and how he's the reason the place is closed. We don't really know why, or I don't know why, um, he wants Arkham closed, but it is. And then we have Maroni on the other side, who's talked about Arkham, and then comes Penguin. Did you hear anything? No, I didn't hear anything. That's a boy. That kind of thing. Penguin's gathering information. Um, but Maroni talks about reopening Arkham, and that's how he's going to try to overthrow Falcone. It's just part of his big plan. 
Um, so Arkham is very much in the forefront. In episode four, next episode is called Arkham Asylum. So really cool to see how Arkham is uh, built on um, in the future episode. Uh, number two is Selena Kyle, uh, the Catwoman. Uh, she is developed a little bit more in this episode. Um, in the last episode, she reveals to Gordon that she knows who kills the Waynes. And in this episode, he takes her out to the crime scene and she explains everything to him and tells him that the wallet she stole, which we know she stole in the pilot, or being the pilot, she threw into the sewers. So Gordon handcuffs her to a little pole and then goes into the sewers and finds the wallet. And Selena Kyle um, gets away. Um, it's just kind of cool that in the Batman, in the present day that we know Batman, he often just disappears. Batman, Gordon turns around and Batman's gone. Um, and now we don't have Batman. We have Selena Kyle. And she's very much been doing that in this episode, in, in, in the show so far. She kind of just disappears. Um, and she does this a lot. She kind of, um, Gordon finds a wallet and she yells down the sewer, but she escapes. Obviously, it's Calvin. She's going to get out. She did this by actually stealing books, and which is kind of a funny scene. They're, um, so Gordon is signing the uh, custody forms for Selena Kyle, um, like for the day, and she kind of gets close to the bullock, and bullock says back away, and then when they're gone, she zooms into bullock and says, "Hey, where's my pen?" I found out that of course Selena Kyle took. I kind of chuckled at that um, when he said that. I knew right away that Catwoman took it. So it's really cool to see a uh, Catwoman get these kind of roles. And finally, number one is Bruce Wayne's um, development. Um, the first time we see Bruce in this episode, he is sword fighting with, uh, Alfred. Why can't I think of the name? Uh, with Alfred. Um, now, in the comics, Batman doesn't sword fight a lot, unless it's with an enemy that does sword fight too. Most commonly is Raish or Raz al Ghul. I call him Raish. That's what most of the media calls him, except for the Nolan universe, which has called him, called him Raz. Um, Arrow is calling him Raish. The Arkham series has called him Raish, so I know him as Raish. Sorry, I often cry when or I start tearing because I talk a lot and fast because I'm doing these episodes that causes me to tear. I don't know why. So, uh, Bruce is definitely training himself and pushing himself in this episode. Not as much as he was physically um, and painfully in the last episode where he burned himself, but he is training his physical battles and he's not eating, kind of testing himself, looks like. And then also, he's also becoming a detective. He's pushing himself to learn um, about these crimes and stuff. Um, he has Alfred finds a folder of Wayne of the Wayne murder and he asks Bruce why do you have these living nightmares? And Bruce says he's looking for clues. And then later in the episode we see him with the balloon uh reading the newspaper and it's with the balloon man. And then he looks over to the T V and he sees or at the end of the episode he looks over to the T V and he sees vigilantes on the loose and he kind of we kinda of see this look in his eye like that may be something I want to do. Um, so that's really cool. Now one final thing um, for, no, no, I want to do, um, before I close out, uh, is something that I've wanted to talk about since the premiere episode, I just, forget about it, I don't write it down, now I wrote it down, um, as we know from the first, uh, episode review, my favorite character in the Batman universe is the Riddler, which we, is Edward Nigma in this universe, in, in, well, the same universe, but in this series, is Edward Nigma. Um, and in the logo, in between the T and the H, it kind of zooms out and shows Gotham, and Gotham City is behind it. Um, you can see the little, uh, question mark, it's a green question mark, obviously a reference to the ruler at this point, it's really cool. So that will be all for this review. Um, I'm, um, supposed to go up yesterday, I was just really busy yesterday with schoolwork, so it's now going up a day later, and my Flash review will also premiere along with this episode of Super Mario 64, which is uploading right now. I've been Ember Gamer. Don't forget to like and favorite and subscribe and check out my Facebook and Instagram page. I posted something really cool um, that about a video that will be premiering on Christmas Day in December this year. And I will have a trailer going up for the Halloween. I will have a Halloween trailer for what is premiering on Christmas. And I will see you in the flash review. Bye.